All right then, gang. So Go is what's known as a pass by value language. And this basically means that when we pass variables around as arguments in functions, Go makes a copy of those values for the function to use. So we're going to dive into what that means for us as coders in this lesson. So in Go, variable types can be split up into two distinct groups. I'm just going to call these groups group A and group B for now, but we'll give better names to them later on. These are just the types that we've learned about so far, plus an extra one called a struct, which we're going to learn about later on. Now, there are other types which can go into these different groups, but we've not covered those yet, so I've left them out for now. But understanding the difference between these two groups of types and how they work is pretty important, and it's going to affect how you write Go code. So to demonstrate my point, let's dive into a couple of examples first, then we'll circle back around to the theory. So I've got a name variable declared right here, which is a string. And remember that belongs to group A types, strings, ints, bools, floats, arrays, and structs. So I have this string in this variable. I've also created this function called update name, and that takes in a string, which we refer to as X. And inside the function, we take that string and we update the value of it to wedge. So what if I call this function update name and I pass in the name variable, which is teeth at the minute. We take in that variable and we update the value of X, that value to wedge inside the function. Then at the end down here, we print out the name variable after we've run this function. So what do you expect to see here? Do you expect to see Tifa or wedge? Because we've updated the name inside this function. You'd probably expect to see wedge, but let's take a look and see what happens. I'm gonna open the console run the file, go run main.go, and we see Tifa. So it's not actually changed the value of the name inside this function. So why not? Well, what's happening is every time we pass a value or a variable into a function, Go creates a copy of the variable. So this is a copy of the name variable, not the original name variable. And then inside here, all we're doing is updating the copy of the variable and not the one we actually defined right here. It creates a copy of that inside the function and that's the one we update, which is why we still see Tifa down here when we print it to the console. So to understand this a bit more, I wanna talk about how variable values are stored on our computers in memory. Now, our computer memory is a bit like a massive sequence of memory blocks where each block can store a single value. Now, each block also has a unique memory address associated with it, and our computer can use the memory address to either read values from or write values to that block. Now, when we create a variable, for example, called age, we store its value in one of these blocks, and the variable name age acts as a label for this block and the memory address so that when we use a variable in our code our computer knows which block and which memory address is associated with and it can read the value inside that block now if we have another value or another variable its value is stored inside another block now when we pass one of these values into a function go copies that value and places it into another block whilst the function runs and this is the value that will be used inside that function. Now, if we change that value inside the function, it's this value we change, not the original. So when we print out the original variable after the function runs, we still get its original value because it's not been changed. Only the copy has been changed. So this is how passing around variables in Go works. A copy is created and stored in its own memory location. So, when passing variables in this group of types, strings, ints, bools, arrays, floats, and structs into a function as an argument, changing the value of that argument inside the function does not change the original value, it only changes the copy. So one solution to this is to actually return a value here if we actually want to update this name. So we could return X right here, but we also have to specify the return type in the function at the top, which is going to be a string. So now what we could do is say, well, okay, name is going to be updated to equal whatever this function returns to us, in which case it's going to be wedge. And if I save this now and run the file, 
then we should see that it's updated to wedge right here. Awesome. So that's the behavior of these types right here in group A. Now I want to move on to the other group of types, group B. So if we scroll down here a bit, I've got commented out at the minute. So let's just make it visible a menu, which is a map. And this remember is one of the group B types, which is slices, maps and functions. So we have this map right here. I'm also going to paste in a function at the top that I've created as well called update menu that takes in a map of exactly this type right here. And we call that Y inside the function. And again, we update Y right here. We say Y this element is equal to 299. So the same as we did over here before, before we returned a value, we're just passing an item in the map and updating the map inside the function. And then down here, what I'm going to do is call that function update menu and pass in the menu. And then I'm going to print out the menu. So FMT dot print line menu. So what do you think is going to happen here? Remember with this group of types right here, it doesn't actually change the original value. What's going to happen here? Is it going to change the original value or not? Well, let's save it and find out. So if we run the file, then we can see right here the map and we can see now this coffee is 299. Now it wasn't there in the original one. So it's added in this element right here. Coffee is equal to 299. So it's changed the original value of menu. So what's going on here? Now the explanation I'm going to give you here is a simplistic version of what's happening under the hood. So when we create a variable, which is a type from group B, Go does two things. First, it stores the underlying data in memory in its own block. And then it stores a value which contains other information, including a pointer to the underlying data in another block. And the variable name is associated with this memory block. So in essence, the value is split up into multiple memory locations, the underlying data in one and a wrapper which contains a pointer to the underlying data in another. Now we'll learn more about pointers later, but all they do is basically point to another memory location. So when we use this variable in our code, go find this block, sees the pointer to the other memory block and reads from or writes to this underlying data. So then when we pass this value as an argument into a function first, Go still does make a copy of the variable. That bit doesn't change. We always make a copy, but it's copying the value stored inside this memory block where the pointer or the reference is stored, not the underlying data. That's not copied. And now this copy contains the same pointer pointing to the same underlying data. So when we change the variable inside the function, Go looks at the copied variable in memory. It sees that it points to the other block. Then it updates the value in that block. So it changes the original value. So that's the difference between these two groups of data and how they work or these two groups of types, if you like, and how they work. So to give these groups better names, we'll call them pointer wrapper values and non pointer values. Anyway, now we know how these groups of types work. I want to dive a little deeper and talk about pointers. Remember, we said that pointers were the things that pointed to another memory block or memory location. So we'll talk more about those next.